much for joining us on the last show. What an amazing response. And I learned so much and had a lot of fun. I hope you're still interacting, sharing, commenting. Carry on even on this episode because you could stand a chance of winning one of two 2,500 Rand vouchers from Art of Superwoman online store. So today, I'm particularly excited to have this conversation because we're going to be talking about entertainment in the home. We know how stressful it was during lockdown and we know that entertaining the kids was at an all-time high of our priorities during the lockdown. Not only that, then load shedding hit us. So today I want to talk about entertaining the kids, the internet consumption, as well as how to maintain our connectivity even during those dark times. Let's go. And welcome back to another session of Connected Home. And we're back with Pelani Bubu, who is the presenter slash host of Design For You on the Home Channel on DSTV, as well as Marcel, who is the head of Vodacom's home segment. Welcome, and thank you for joining me again. Thanks for having us. <laughs> thank you very much for having us. I mean, the last time we dug into a big wall of wisdom, and I drew a lot from what we spoke about, right? So I think on this session, we're really going to be talking about the entertainment aspect. Over the lockdown, we learned that there's nothing more valuable than entertainment in the home. Keeping ourselves entertained, but also entertainment comes with learning sometimes for the children. Sometimes it comes with also fulfillment for ourselves. Um, it's a whole lot of self-love for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, when it comes to keeping ourselves entertained in the home with the internet, what are some of the things that we need to kind of look out for, you know, when we're connecting, when we're using fiber and all the other packages that we spoke of, LTE, um, what works with what? So I want to paint a scenario for you. In our home, we have a gamer. And then we also have um, my other kids love their YouTube consumption and they love their edutainment. I love streaming, I love my Amazon, my Netflix, my Showmax, my DSTV now. I also love, you know, streaming my yoga online these days because kind of lockdown has taught us that you can't go into the yoga studio, so my Pilates and my yoga are on my screen. Um, and then there's the elements of keeping certain elements of our house connected. We spoke about having the wireless um, speakers and the connected lights, etc., in your home. What are things and critical things to look out for tech-wise in all of this? I think very important is for us to sum up all the various devices that could potentially at any given time connect to the internet and that would want bandwidth from the internet. So gone are the days that there is typically one television set in a household. Now there's two or three television sets. Hi. And now you've got, <laughs> everybody's got a tablet and a telephone. And if you look at your consumption patterns, especially the kids, they'll be walking down the passage looking at something on their telephone, put down the telephone, move over to a tablet, look at something else, consume internet, then plonk down in front of the television set, and now they're watching YouTube. So you are got to look at all of these devices that could potentially be consuming internet access in your home. So again, to our previous discussion, make sure that you by sufficient capacity, so in the case of uh, fiber, su sufficient line speed to be able to cater for, for all these requirements. Um, and then as our houses become smarter, last time we spoke about Internet of Things, <laughs> we will just increase this requirement for bandwidth inside the house. So very important, go look at all your devices and know that you have got sufficient bandwidth for all the devices in the home. Is it necessary to have so many TVs? Yeah. I'm sure the average is like three. Where do you think some of these devices should be sitting? You said be bedroom? Oh, the, the master bedroom generally would have a television. Okay. I didn't have a TV yeah. in my master bedroom yeah. until the lockdown. Yeah. And then we, ha we stole one of the kids' TVs out of their room. And we're like, we need it more. Right. And I think those are some, some learnings that we kind of figured out you know, in recent times. Yes. It's not, not all master bedrooms have, have TVs and, um, you know, other ways to also entertain ourselves is sometimes like a speaker yeah. or like, um, or the, the wireless and sound systems around the home mm -hmm. and then kind of a TV in the lounge and maybe another TV, where else you said? 
Well, I don't know. Some people might want it in the kitchen because you'd probably be cooking during prime time. Mm -hmm. and and so you maybe might want to have that and i think the kitchen is like the heart of the home it's the place where everybody comes together and at times in those intermediary moments others may need to kind of like look at something together while we're all busy waiting for a meal or having a conversation around the day but i how i would look at kind of a function and functionality of devices or anything in a space when it comes to entertainment is that actually it's about enjoyment so what are you likely to enjoy in that space and also how would you like to enjoy it you know so for my side decoratively and how you kind of place furniture also inspires like what someone is doing whether they're using a tablet or their phone or whether they're going to go to a desk like a bar area or a kitchen and actually open their laptop and so you can almost like inspire and cite what actually happens and um, another thing that you can look at is that um, in this space focal points in a home actually define function so if I walk through the door what is the first thing that my eye is going to be drawn to so in this perspective it's this corner of the room so I may very well likely walk in and go there and like drink a glass of water a pitcher of water or have the coffee over there or play something there switch on the light so there's something happening here it's the artwork there's a focal point if I were to kind of like move a little bit to this room and this was an entertainment room I'd expect a side console there where I can arrive and there's something there maybe I'm switching on a Bluetooth speaker uh, you know, or, and there's an iPad and it links to the speaker and everybody here can enjoy something to listen to. In other rooms, if this was the sitting room, that would definitely be the television. And the television, we don't like it to be a focal point, so we build a lot of things around it, like panels, wood panels, um, shelving and floating shelves and place ornaments so that it distracts from just this black screen. So if you walk into every room, look at where the focal point is likely to be. If it's the entertainment space, you might want to have a drinks tray on the corner. It implies to people you can come in here, relax, pour a glass of wine or pour a glass of whiskey. And so in all of those spaces, you know, I think, um, I know in lockdown, you were baking a lot with the kids. Yeah. And I, I, I was trying to figure out where you were placing the cameras and, and things. And so you almost could, we could see that, that, so there was light coming in and there was the kitchen counter and you kind of see through that. But on the left here, you could have had that television there to distract the kids while you're yeah. doing what you're doing. You know, so even though it's a kitchen, you'd still want some kind of device there. Mm -hmm. So that's also like fun function, but also like focused on what the intention of that room is. Yeah, I mean, all these things need different types of connectivity or, you know, is it once again, is it all kind of just a whole lot of plugs and the boosters? boosters. So, so remember um, the the data stream that comes into your house from outside the data connection. Um, all of the devices in your home, be it a cell phone or a tablet or a smart TV or an IoT device, it connects to this data stream. And you don't need a specific data stream to be able to handle a specific device. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you've got sufficient data in this data stream to handle the number of devices, it's all pretty much the same to, to, the, to the data that is provided. So you don't have to buy a specific data type or data uh, um, category to be able to have mm. certain access in your the normal data stream will suffice but coming back to the point it's all about making sure that you've got sufficient uh, Wi-Fi connectivity in home mm. um, yes if you place your router next to your television set maybe a good idea to connect the television set to the router and therefore to data via LAN cable because they are close to each other. However, if the smart television is on the other side of the house, it's not practical to connect it with a, with a cable to this router, then you connect it via Wi-Fi. So you're also looking for horses for courses um, uh, in terms of connecting to your, to your data. And let's talk about the elephant in the room, load shedding. Hey! <laughs> load shedding and entertainment. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we we struggle with just keeping the kids entertained during load shedding because everything goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, their life comes to a halt. The whole world comes crumbling down once the load shedding hits. Mm -hmm. What are some solutions that are out there well, besides so charging the iPads prior? <laughs> <laughs> but so you still don't have internet. Does fiber yeah. work then? So what is important that is when the internet, um, when the electricity is no longer available, you've got an interruption. As long as your router has electricity supply, yeah. it will still receive the uh, signal from the fiber, mm. 
and it will still receive a signal from, if in the case of a LTE product, from the mobile network. Because in the case of fiber, now three letter acronym, the technology is referred to as passive optical networks. And that means it doesn't need electricity to be transferred. It uses light energy. So there's no electricity required to bring that source of data into your home. But your router needs electricity to be able to decode the data and give it to you in the form of of Wi-Fi or, la or the local area network connectivity. Mm. Okay, so let me get let, 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 let me get this first place right. So in order for the internet to come into your home and before it hits the the router itself, it it just it doesn't need any work. Doesn't it doesn't need, need electricity. Any electricity. Okay, cool. So now we need to solve the problem of the actual router yes. now. So now the important thing oh, is so you yeah. need to power up that device, mm. and you need to provide a solution for when. The, the electricity grid is down. So there you've got a number of options. The first option is to do an expensive exercise and you um, put up battery systems mm -hmm. and inverters in your home and then that will give you electricity supply. And will set you back. And that will set you back a fair couple amount of money. <laughs> couple of 10,000. Or you can uh, buy what we refer to as a UPS, uh, uninterruptible power supply, and what the UPS fundamentally is, is a, is a small battery that gets continuously charged when the electricity network is available. And when the electricity network is no longer available, it will automatically start generating current and providing that electricity, that current to your router. Okay. So, if the electricity goes and I've got a UPS device that's connected to my router, I will still yes, have yeah. connectivity. So, Vodacom does offer uh, a number of UPS options, so you can buy deals, um, you can buy a LTE deal or a fiber deal with a UPS included, or you can go to a Vodacom store uh, and buy what, a UPS. There. What's the size of a UPS? So we currently have two options. Um, the, the first option, which gives you a little bit longer availability and gives you the option to add more than just a router is approximately the size of, of that device. Okay. It's a little bit heavier because it does have a, a battery inside. Mm -hmm. And we also have what we refer to as a mini UPS, which is that size. Mm -hmm. And that is specifically built just to power up your uh, router for, for the duration of a, of a power outage. Power outages in South Africa most probably on average four hours. Yeah. So it gives you more than sufficient time to, to go through the four hours and people can still connect to the internet. So yeah. crazy that we actually have an average and that average is four. <laughs> I feel like stage four. <laughs> I'm yeah. such a traditionalist, you know. I'm thinking like when the lights are out, that's the opportunity for people to actually have a conversation and bond. Um, I don't know if you've watched Bridgerton on, on, on Netflix and mm. how they, in the back in the days, there was something called a games room. Mm. You know, where everyone came in, one person would play the piano, cards. the other is playing cards, the other is playing mm. chess. And not to eliminate kind of the consumption of kind of data with the cell phone is that there's so many games that also exist within kind of our devices that we can play with. It's charades or mm. guess this or um, trivial pursuits. You know, I think the opportunity almost it comes to kind of like stage a place where you can actually come together to do something together. I mean, uh, unless it's kind of like working time, then obviously everyone's in the study and the one person is there. So that's like a staged space where if there is like sort of um, uh, load shedding, then you'd have this UPS kind of located. It doesn't matter where it's located in the house. The UPS has to be um, connected to your router. Router itself. Yes. So you would typically have um, the UPS mm. connected to the electricity and then your router is plugged into the UPS. So it just automatically kicks in yes. when the electricity charged. goes down. And, and that's the beauty of the technology. So you don't have to think about it, it will automatically provide you with a service. So if you have line extensions and you're only focusing on like, your study and then you're focusing on the family room mm. um, for the night times, yeah. you know, 
And then as long as your devices are charged, you can always like use your cell phone, which yeah. is pretty Because cool. I think either way, everybody kind of just gravitates to one space, right? Mm. They just, all, everybody kind of just comes together yes. and we're all figuring out, okay, what to do next? Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you do now? Do we just stare at each other? Who's getting the takeaways? <laughs> right, right. I think it's, a, I, 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 I love moments like that for bonding, honestly. Mm. Um, and I think you can, in, you know, incite that kind of decoratively by making that one space so well equipped with everything. So where's that room where the bookshelf is? Yeah. Where's that room that actually holds the games? Where's that room where you're going to place a fat sack or an ottoman? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because we tend to kind of like naturally want to earth and calm or down. Move towards so like a movie night. Yeah. A movie yeah. night or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So that that's that's something to think about. Where to place that UPS is kind of the place where you congregate. Exactly. Yeah. And what can you plug to? to you know the the UPS now is only plugged to the the the, the modem. The main modem. Yeah, the it reader? doesn't necessarily charge now the boosters. No, it will. So, so if you need um, the boosters to be also charged and, and functioning during our outage, each of them will have to have we'll the have UPS have included. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. How much does an average UPS cost? Um, that the one about that size. The <laughs> cost is around four five hundred rand, depending okay. on the that's model. Okay. Oh, that's so I'm also thinking. <laughs> no, so it's quite an affordable option to to build a safeguard mm -hmm. against um, power outages. Power outages, unfortunately, are not only during the evening, they're during the day as well. Yeah. You are now working on, on, a, on a specific task and you need to send that very important email and now you've got a problem. Mm. You know, so uh, for that small investment, you've got that um, peace of mind in order to have your, your data throughout the day. Amazing. Peace of mind and value because yeah. you'll lose out. And can you take that UPS and use it for like any other thing or is it specifically? That, that <laughs> UPS is um, rated for a certain energy consumption. So you could use it for another device that has pretty much the same energy consumption than your router. Yeah. Okay. What does that mean, like wattage? Yes, wattage, yeah. Okay. So um, in addition to that, Viracom also offers a, another interesting product where, let's say for example, there is a problem with your fiber network. Somebody has been digging up the um, pavement outside your home. They are now putting in other infrastructure and they accidentally damage the fiber cable. Now suddenly there's no more fiber available. Vodacom's got a mobile backup product where we um, offer you a modem, a mobile modem, that you insert into the USB slot of your router. Okay. And nice. when the fiber data dies for whatever reason, mm. it will automatically switch over to this mobile network, our LTE network, and you continue to have data via your, um, your uh, modem until the fiber network is restored. Right. That's amazing. Have you ever heard you do a Zoom call or like no, actually like present on, on yeah. we were presenting and doing interviews basically on Zoom and you know, during lockdown. So like I was running like press for an album release and I'm like, is this connection even going to stay through this yeah. interview? And it's, it's, it's a struggle. And you, and Everything you, is so unpredictable. Mm. Like, oh, anything could happen right now. Yeah, that safety net is important because life continued to be scheduled at that time. It's not like people, we were more understanding when people said, yeah, I'm load shedding or I'm, uh, you know what I mean? I don't have lights or my internet's down or it's slow. Yeah. The cause with the internet is slow. I want to ask Marcel, whilst yes. you on that note, is it a thing, this thing that happened during lockdown when the kids are on their devices, they're in homeschooling, um, this one is on um, YouTube Kids, and I am busy working, I'm on a Zoom, and the network is kind of just like nabbing. It all comes back to our conversation <laughs> around having sufficient bandwidth into the home. Okay. That type of, of, so of the, capacity. So the thing to look for there is the bandwidth. Correct. There's unlimited so data. it's the pipe thing. It's a pipe. There's unlimited data. Mm. You can eat as much data as you would like throughout the month. There's no limit there. But the technology and the infrastructure that that have been provisioned and the, the price plan or the tariff that you've bought only allows a certain megabits per second, a certain flow of data into your home. And if that is insufficient for all of the devices at the same time, then you're going to have to upgrade your, your capacity, get a bigger pipe to get more data into your home. And that's where we spoke about when we started, we say 
take stock of everything in the house, make sure that you know where are all these devices. You will be surprised when you start counting the devices in your home yeah. that consume internet. <laughs> it's staggering. Yeah. So make provision for that and uh, purchase uh, sufficient bandwidth. There's one advantage of fiber and, mm. and fiber through Vodacom is that at any given time you can increase. It's not, uh, we don't change the connection into your home. We don't visit your home to do any uh, changes. It's all done via system. So you can upgrade your line speed at any given time. Okay. Yeah. And, the, and the pipe? Sorry, I'm like. So, so, so the line speed equals the pipe I size. So how oh. many megabits per second? The what less megabits per second, the smaller the pipe. pipe. The bigger the pipe. Okay, the got Correct. you. Correct. Is this an imaginary pipe, guys? It's like imaginary. imaginary. Stop imagining imaginary this pipe. pipe. <laughs> I totally was like thinking there's this huge, the bigger the house, the bigger the pipe, the pipe is physical. This is an imaginary pipe. It's, an imaginary it's imaginary pipe. pipe. A pipeline. Pipe yeah. And, okay, that's, and that's, a, yeah, that's the easiest way to explain it to, to, to people is that it, it is like a hose pipe. It's like a yes. pipe with water. The data is just water flowing. Right. You know, I can, I, can only, I can only push so much water through this, uh, this pipe or this hose gotcha. pipe. More water, you've got to open it up. You've got to get a bigger one. Yeah. Unfortunately, there is the option to increase it. So Marcel, um, you know, we spoke in the first show about how the kids go to their grandmother for, for holidays, etc. How do I also ensure that during load shedding, she's not compromised on her LTE? Can I still use a, a UPS? Yes, definitely. Uh, you could use that uh, UPS, either the bigger one or the smaller one, depending on your, on your requirements. You can use it on any Vodacom LTE or fiber router. Mm -hmm. So it is designed to, to power any type of... Uh, connectivity device such as router. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's powering the router, but can it also power a TV? The bigger one that we sell can, can power te television sets, but um, it, it will not necessarily give you a full four hour... Uh, um, Big but it can give me one movie, but so everyone can come together movie, for a yes, movie. Correct, yeah. I think that's, like, that, that's usually like what we want, right, during load shedding, to just create a, a moment out of it. I, I was actually just about to say, because I started imagining that when, the, when there is downtime, we do the things that are separate from the spaces we're likely to put our bums in. One, we want to go outside. We want to like experience nature. Or two, you might want to take a bath. Like this yeah. is, a, you have enough time to kind of like run a bath, switch on a candle. Like, cause now you have incentive to switch on a candle. And so the concept of mobility comes up for me in, in, in terms of like entertainment spaces and those spaces also being individual, but also together. So together we're in a living room and maybe apart, like others are in, you know, watching rugby in a patio space. So you're taking a me, like me time in a, in a bath. And, and how does that work, um, at, you know, kind of in a home and, and kind of creating those spaces um, within that context of kind of like a load shedding situation. Yeah, so as long as, long as you've got the necessary Wi-Fi coverage, again, you take your devices everywhere we would like to take them. Um, it, it, is, it, is still, it is still dependent on that coverage. If there's no, no electricity, you still need to create the coverage. Because the UPS is a powered it's like a power bank thing for your thing. thing. You can go with the thing. You can actually take it to the patio. To the patio or the swing. I'd like to rhyme so that the thing like, is yeah. You can actually sit on the patio. Literally. With your device. You're outside. You can have your glass of wine. The kids, I mean, you know, it's kind of winter now. Mm. But usually, like, they'd be swimming a night swim. You know, you're creating yeah. memories and moments in your home. And it's... You, like eureka moment yeah. like you said i know i'm just thinking that i need to go buy a ubs <laughs> tomorrow i'm like what have i been doing with my life <laughs> honestly thank UBS. you so much i mean this this was amazing i'm, I'm already i'm coming up with ideas yeah. i think uh, you know when you you know those outdoor bonfire things yes and then a you kind they call it that one mm -hmm. a burma i think i'm gonna go get one of those i'm gonna go get like a nice like portable kind of like screen that we can plug outside we can watch our outdoor movie night you could yes. whilst we have our, our boomer going yeah. even during load shedding right or even even the if there is no load shedding you just plug in your ups you can sit outside with the extender listen this ups thing has just 
like created so much <laughs> also because we can't you know we have to social distance so nobody really wants to have people in their home and South African winters are so divine yeah. that you actually have the sun out and strong you know so you mm -hmm. could actually literally have um, people outside and watching um, different things or having a movie Correct. yeah um, I mean I'm, I'm excited because I'm going to share this with my mother-in-law. She is obsessed with like the YouTubes now that her, the grandkids have introduced her to these nice YouTube channels and introduced her to like Amazon. So she is going to be super, super excited to be able to take that and use it even during load shedding. Even when she's with the kids during mm. the load shedding, I think it's such an exciting element to just have that, to create those memories and moments with your grandkids even when there, there's so many outages, especially in the area they live in. Definitely, and um, yeah. uh, Amazon Prime Video is, is a brilliant destination for, 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 for parents and kids and, and people to, to go enjoy entertainment. Um, Vodacom offers uh, uh, on us uh, new customers that sign up six months uh, uh, um, Amazon Prime Video. Well, I'm honest. And thereafter <laughs> you've got the choice to, to, to uh, take the subscription or not. Amazing. Oh, that's wonderful. Globally or just by location? South Africa? South African based, yes. Nice. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marcel. Thank you. Liz. Thank you, Pilani. Another very insightful session. Another, I've learned so much. I've gotten so much. I've got so many great ideas and I can't wait to implement them and to create these amazing memories in my connected home. Don't forget, interact, comment, share. You could win two 2,500 Rand vouchers from the Art of Woman online store. Until next time, bye.